Now we're going to go into the actual trading side of things. Like that's Brent crude. Unfortunately, $155 or it could be forming a M formation. Let's move on. So remember products chart. We then have um, the next one, Cocoa Futures. Uh, this one almost hit my take profit. But what do we see here? This is a weekly chart. Weekly chart, I don't see anything. I just see a simple box formation. Uh, let's see. We got a rectangle. I see a box formation. And we need the price to break either up or below. And when it does, we will know exactly where it's heading. Some elements, we are seeing higher lows. We are seeing the same highs. So it could be forming an ascending triangle for it to break up. It will go with regards to Brent crude increasing. We could see inflation continue to go up. Prices will go up. And so US cocoa futures will also break up. But until then, this is a no-go zone, nothing to do here. Next we have is gold. Gold, unfortunately, is on my to buy to sell list. As you can see it's formed either an M formation. Let's see, here's an arc. We can say it's formed this type of M formation. It's formed a retarded M formation. <laughs> it's, like, it's almost like a triple top. And if it breaks below the first target for gold will be. Let me know what your thoughts are as well. If you agree or disagree. If I'm wrong, I'm happy to state that I'm wrong. So let's put the short position. Ah, it's already broken. So there is a high chance that the market is going to continue down from here. So the entry would be there. The stop loss and the take profit would be around here. And you can see the risk to reward is 1.45. And I normally like it 1.5. So I'll drop it a little bit lower. And there it is. So gold's first target is $1,364. The RSI is continuing to make lower highs. So let's grab this line. The RSI is continuing to make lower highs. It's below the 50 mark. The price is broken below this quadruple top. And it's made lower highs as well. So gold is not looking good, but very importantly, it's testing the 200-day moving average. So we can expect the price to uh, jump up and down here, but when the suppliers and sellers kick in, it is going down, $1,353. Not great, not a safe haven yet to, to buy, unfortunately. But at this level, it could be an incredible level to buy gold. Thoughts? Let me know. I want to hear your thoughts. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Send it in the chat. Go gold, agree. Gold, disagree. Maybe tell me something that you see otherwise. HG, copper futures. So copper futures, I say here, I'm on the fence. There's two possibilities. One cup and handle, one raising wedge. I don't know when I did this analysis, but what we can say is that there is a rising wedge, which is broken to the downside. We can expect the first price to be at 3.20 and then the second price to be at 2.68. So this is definitely a sell signal for me. And I'll put my stop loss around here. My... my um, Reward level is at this point where the risk reward is 1.5. So copper looks like it's on its way down due to this rising wedge, due to this sideways formation, box formation that broke to the downside, 
and due to the RSI, which is continuing to make lower highs. Do you agree, disagree? Copper is on its way down. Then we have natural gas, one of the most popular traded commodities, which is actually looking quite bullish. So we can see it has formed lower, uh, higher lows. The inclination has been increasing, which means that the momentum of buying is, is rising. The seven moving average is above the 21 moving average, which is above the 200 day moving average, which is bullish. And the RSI is making high lows, keeps bouncing up. Uh, it is making lower highs though. So momentum is slowing down. But as long as it's above the 50 mark, we can expect upside for natural gas. So we could see it do something like this. Let's see up here. And we can get the first price at 10. 0.73, okay? 10, all right, 10.78. There's a target for natural gas. Next, nickel. What is nickel doing on my watch list? This doesn't look great. I can't do anything with nickel. The liquidity, the volatility is different. Maybe on a daily, it looks different. No. You see, I could tell instantly Weekly, it just looked like there was no volatility, no liquidity, unless I chose the wrong uh, market. Because if you go here to nickel, you type nickel. Sorry, nickel. You can go futures. You can even choose the source that you want. So United States, even South Africa, you can choose anything. So nickel futures, this is Indian. Nickel Futures, Hong Kong. Oh, no, wait, this is London. London Nickel Futures. Anyway, Nickel is out of my watch list. That's how quickly it takes to choose whether you want to trade something or not. Platinum Futures. You can see I've made quite an extensive rectangle but I see something else. I wonder if they have that pattern. Not really. I'm looking for a diamond shape. So what we'll do is we'll do this and we'll take two triangles. Now you see a diamond formation. Now, what is a diamond formation? A diamond formation is either a continuation or reversal pattern, depending on which way the market breaks out of the, the direction. So for example, we have some elements that the market moved down, it then formed this diamond formation. And now either the price will break up and it will go to the top of the diamond formation first, and if it breaks above that level, then it will go to near the, the top of the flagpole, which is about there. Let's, let's give it some leeway. And if it breaks below, then it will do the opposite. And what I like to do is I take the price range, grab it from the high down to the low, copy, paste, bring that down. And if it breaks below, uh, then you got to move this to where the breakout is. <laughs> it's zero. <laughs> I love it when it does that. Okay, I doubt we're going to see platinum move to zero. So let's be optimistic. Let's not be fully pessimistic. And let's uh, say that platinum is on its way up to $1,720. Okay. I love it when that happens. It's, it's happened to Bitcoin. It's happened to some of the stocks on the JSC where the technicals show that it's going to zero. But as an optimist and because of inflation and because it's a precious metal, I don't think platinum will go to zero. We will wait for that breakout. The RSI is showing upside momentum. 
let's draw it. Okay, so it is showing upside momentum. It is flirting around the 50 level mark. So we do need that breakout in order to determine whether it's going to be bearish or bullish. So above this will be bullish. And below it will be bearish. And then we'll obviously look at stocks to trade accordingly of whether we're going to be buying or going short. Next we have is Robusta Coffee. Not my favorite. I prefer Arabica. I like a sweet coffee. What do you prefer, bitter coffee or sweet coffee? Arabica or Robusta? You never know what you're going to learn from these lessons. Today you learned about coffee. Okay, so good thing about coffee is that it's formed this. All right, let's zoom out so we can see what, what it's formed. It's formed this massive wedge formation since 2006. It broke out of it on the 23rd of August, 2021. It then retested that retracement at, what price is this? At 1942, it tested it and the sellers were not abundant. The buyers were abundant and the price has been driving up. So we can see this type of movement in the next couple of weeks. And then I see it breaking up. And it will be going to the most recent high at 28. So that is my target for Robusta Coffee. What do you think? Is it a buy? Is it a sell? I would put the long position took place here. The entry price is exactly where the breakout was. And we need to do the risk to reward of, let's go about 1.66, just below the 200 day moving average. That's quite a good trade to have. Okay. Sugar futures, another popular one you can trade with Velocity or MT5. Sugar futures, let's look at the bigger picture. So the bigger picture is that it's also broken above this downtrend. It failed to break below this extensive downtrend at 10.54. So the funny thing about this is that it did the opposite of what it should have done. So it formed a descending triangle. Instead of breaking to the downside, it broke to the upside. And now, what is it forming? Let me know. I know exactly. I know that you know what it is. Could it be forming a W formation? a price range and where is the target the target is all-time highs you know it just confirms with commodities that inflation trumps anything so the next target for sugar on a weekly basis is 35.74 let's look at it on a daily basis just out of interest to see if anything has formed Very similar. This is why I chose weekly instead of daily. Daily, you can see there has been this wedge formation that's formed. It's broke. It's we're waiting now for the breakouts, so we can put a long position, and we'll put the long position to twenty six and about here. So it definitely is a buy signal around this level, and I'll definitely send it out to the premium once it breaks. Next we have is silver. Silver is not looking good. Let's go weekly so we can see the bigger picture. All right, so silver formed that descending triangle that I told you about. 
and it followed suit of what it's supposed to do. And that is at three quarters of the apex, it breaks below, and then it goes to a target from the price range of the high to the low. And let's copy and paste it. Let's move it down. What do you think of TradingView? Let me know in the chat. Are you enjoying this charting platform? Is it something that you think you can uh, you can relate to and, and annotate and put your trading patterns in? Let's put a triangle for silver futures. So the target for silver is at 14040. So let's grab the short position. The short position took place here. We'll take a stop loss above the formation. Uh, the risk to reward is 1.79. So the target for silver is 14040. The RSI is below the 50 mark, which is bearish. We are seeing lower highs. Okay. So silver is bearish, unfortunately. Corn futures. It's corn. Now we're going to have to go to the W, the daily format, the daily chart. I see a cup and handle. We are waiting for the breakout, which it did take place, but now it's testing this level. So we have got our entry level. We put our stop loss below the handle of the cup. Okay. And I always give it leeway. I never do it exactly at the bottom of the handle. I give it leeway because there are wicks and there are market makers that like to test levels and get people out because they are looking at those handles. And I say, nope, I'm going to go below that handle just to uh, trick the market maker so that once it tests that level, it then goes back up. So I, we got the breakout. So you can see this is an old analysis. And now it is on its way up to 78, uh, sorry, 788, okay, for corn futures. Soybeans is doing what it's supposed to. It has formed a ascending triangle. Let's make it bigger. All right, so it's formed an ascending triangle. Same highs, it's bouncing on. Higher lows, and now we're waiting for the breakout. And when it breaks out, it's going to look absolutely fantastic for long, and we can expect the high to close the gap. So you can see there was a gap over here. I'm not sure why there is a gap so extensive. 15th of June, 17th of 16th of June, 17th of June. That is very extensive for a commodity. And we need to find out what happened there. And you can see there's no uh, there's no news events or anything that took place. So the, this is quite dangerous for trading commodities. I don't know if it's done it before, because if it has, 16th of June, 17th of June, it's a dangerous commodity to trade if you see these type of gaps. These are warning signs, red flags, but nevertheless, here is the target. And if you know any corn companies, it's very worth getting into once it breaks above the upside. We also need the price to break above the 200-day moving average, and we can see it's going to do it because we're seeing a bullish divergence. Great. Looks good. Wheat futures. So the wheat futures, I'm looking at daily as well. So the wheat futures has formed a rounding bottom just a rounding bottom, not a cup and handle anything. It could form a handle very possibly, but because it's broken out, there is a high chance that the market will continue up from here. Uh, the target is not very high, not very impressive, but nevertheless, we have to start off somewhere. So the target is first thing above the 200-day moving average. Second, it's at around 973. So that's the futures price for wheat. And we can set our long position above here, set our stop loss about 1.5. It's quite tight. Let's make the, if listen, if the stop loss is tight, 
it doesn't hurt to raise your take profit. It never hurts to raise your take profit. The point is for the risk to reward to be more than 1.5. Then if you have a winning strategy of 60% or 70%, 50%, you still will make profits in the end. Medium to long term, not few months, not a year, not two years in the medium to long term. Take that into consideration. Trading is a medium to long term game. Don't give up. RSI is also showing strong bullish momentum. So that's wheat futures. It looks good for upside. I love longs. They you know, when you see longs, it feels like you are supporting the business, you're supporting the world. Um, when you go short, there's always this derogatory feeling of to go against something that's working very hard. And, and it's probably one of the psychological reasons why I don't enjoy going short. A long position for cattle kicked in. This is in hindsight. I'm sorry, I don't look at cattle. I don't have a facility to trade. So as much as you're saying it's already gone up, I'm just following the rules of what took place before that. You you know, it's difficult to catch every trade, especially when you're looking at 100 markets every day. Okay, so corn looks good for upside. It's already hit the take profit. I've got nothing else to say. Um, maybe it's forming this W formation. So if we do a weekly chart, then we can say it could be forming this W formation, not W, inverse head and shoulders. So it could be forming an inverse head and shoulders or W formation, I'm not sure, but it has broken to the upside already, which means that there is more upside to come. Uh, we can increase it. All right. Now we have something, something less in hindsight. So the new target is 155. Let's grab that there. Perfect. Finally, lean hogs. Also something I don't really trade. If there are any commodities that I've missed, please let me know. We'll find them and we will analyze them. In the meantime, this has been forming a almost like a symmetrical triangle, but more of a rising wedge. If it breaks to the downside, you can expect a target at 71. If it breaks to the upside, you can expect a target at 150. So which way is it going, up or down, you tell me.